six social media best practices that America's most successful nonprofits use. Social media can be a goldmine for your philanthropy, whether it is on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, or the latest and greatest social platform out there. You can increase your charity's exposure and donor base by applying the specific tips and tricks we are sharing with you in this video. Watch now. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. How are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. If you are doing as great as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. Today, we want to talk about six social media best practices that America's most successful nonprofits use. Number one, share stories. If you are on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, you name it, you want to share stories. It may be very tempting to only post requests for donations on social media, but Remember, at the end, you want to talk about a cause that matters to your viewers and followers. So if you keep posting only requests for donations, you will quickly turn off your followers. Believe me, you want to use the platform to share success stories along with images, right? Donors want to see something. They want to see pictures, images, stories. They want to see what's going on in the background, what you're doing. Donors want to see something that they're doing. I mean, they're basically trying to, they want to have meaning for their actions and donations so they want to see that what they're doing means something the importance of meaning is critical folks so one thing you want to do here is when i'm talking about sharing stories for your nonprofit, you want to share stories from impacted communities the kind of work you're doing the kind of actions you are taking you want to show this actions vis-a-vis -vis the impacted communities the affected communities Another thing you want to do is show stories from the direct targets, right? The people who are benefiting from your work. The great work, the great work you're doing must be seen by the direct targets, must be seen by followers and donors. Another thing that's very important is you want to share stories from nonprofit workers, your personnel, what are they doing, right? What kind of impact they're having in their own lives and in, and in their communities. You want to talk about donors, right? If somebody donated, let's say, 100, 100, 100 bucks to your charity, you want to have a quick video about that donor and uh, what made them give to the um, to the charity, how the money was used, this kind of stuff. What I'm trying to say here is that you want to create an ecosystem where everybody can engage and share. And this should be part of this should constitute the cornerstone of your storytelling on social media. You can also share stories about collaborations you did with partner nonprofits. Let's say you are in you, you're doing something for cancer, for breast cancer, for example, you can partner with other organizations that are in the same quote unquote niche that espouse the same cause. So by doing a collab with one, two or three or four philanthropies, you're able to expand the um, the engagement. You're able to expand the reach of your own nonprofit. And that's very important. You also can show behind the scenes info. People love, everybody loves to see what's going on behind behind closed doors. You can do some great three, four or five minutes captivating story about your nonprofit and how things happen in the background. How you organize your campaigns, your fundraising events, how people are working on a daily basis, the kind of um, activities you have undertaken in the last six months or three months or four months so you really want to talk about things from your point of view from the organization's point of view and all the great work you're doing so you look at it as a, a multi-angle a multi-dimensional analysis of the work you're doing so share stories not just requests for donations <laughs> all right number two engage with donors and followers you have to understand when it comes to social media and when it comes to phil philanthropic engagement this is not a one-way street it's a two-way so when you make a post when you upload something and people are responding to you you want to come back to them with responses as well you want to engage in the conversation the conversation is, is not around you it's not around your remember it's very important to remember that the conversation ultimately is not about your charity it is about the cause you are pushing forward it is about the the, the the noble cause that you are espousing it's great when donors and followers comment and share your post now one thing that you want to really remember is that when someone comments on a post to your wall you want to make a point not only 
in responding to them, but you also want to share it across your account. What I'm trying to say here is that the sharing and the engagement and the uh, interaction should not be limited to one platform. If, for instance, if someone engages with you on Instagram with a picture that relates to an event you are currently fostering, you're currently pushing forward, you can share that picture on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. So cross-platform sharing is a great way to engage with your donors and followers. I'll be right back right after this. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. I'm just doing fantastic here, still having a conversation around the six social media best practices that America's most successful nonprofits use every single day. If you love the clarity and quality of the content so far, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already done so. And also turn on the notification bell so you are informed the next time we drop a show. And we do this every single day, rain or shine. Also, comment below, share and like, especially if you have experience with nonprofit fundraising. We want to hear your best practices, things that have worked for you and things that you would recommend our community members do in the future. Number three, don't tell, show. When it comes to nonprofit fundraising, especially on social media, it's very great to show, not just tell, tell people what to do, no, show. And you want to show specifically with pictures and videos, right? You want to you show eye-catching and emotion-evoking images and videos. Those are important and critical when it comes to fundraising, raising funds, and they are way more way more significant than fundraising emails or pages because people are interested in seeing lively lively things live action right we live in a social media world where people people's attention span is very limited so if you want to grab their attention you want to do so asap go with a 30 seconds very impactful video go with a captivating photo Right, people love seeing and sharing photos that make them feel good. So make a point of taking pictures at every event. I don't care if this is a small event or a big event, doesn't matter. The size and magnitude doesn't matter. What matters here is what? Moment, souvenirs, recollections, nostalgia, legacy, right? So whether it's a charity auction or you are dropping off a check, always create a digital memory. Right? It only takes one great social media image to spread your messages to all new audiences. Because as, as a nonprofit, you're not looking to have your content go viral here. But who knows? Nobody knows. Maybe uh, you might be lucky. And if your picture or video goes viral, chances are your charity's bank account will also go up or will also go viral. <laughs> if I can use that term here. But my point here is that Ultimately, when you create a nonprofit, your goal is to expand the reach of your donor base and the reach of your activities. So show with pictures and videos. Number four, remain consistent with posts. Now, consistency here is very important because it is one of the easiest, best practices to explain and implement. You want to be consistent with social media posts it can be now when it comes to consistency let me explain really consistency is multi-dimensional it, it applies across time so if every day you post at 9 a.m eastern standard time you want to stick to that one thing you also want to pay attention to is the relevance of content what is relevance relevance here means that anything you post has to do with your cause it has to do with your organization don't start posting stuff or sharing stuff simply because it's cool or you're trying to grab a piece of the attention because the the theme, that topic is uh, very popular at the moment. You're going to turn off a lot of followers if you start doing that. The thing here is that you want to be consistent across the board when it comes to relevance in content. For example, if you are, let's say you are a youth, let, let's say you're just uh, a cancer research you are fostering cancer research, you are a breast cancer or prostate cancer sort of uh, organization, you want anything that you post on your social media to revolve around the topic of cancer, all right? 
Another thing when it comes to consistency is branded image, branded message for you. Your messages should be branded. So the organization should have a logo. So the colors of the organization, the content, how you write, whether you write formally or informally, you have to really pay attention to that. And also the theme has to be consistent. So for instance, for example, if one month you want to focus on youth engagement or teenage, uh, teenager um, encouragement, I'm just thinking out loud here, but the, if you choose a theme, make sure that theme is consistent over the the time frame you gave yourself. If it's one month, just be consistent around, around that. If it's one week, do that. All right. So I will talk to you right after this. I'm going anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of Sweetie Kiwi. We are still having a conversation around what? The six social media best practices that America's most successful nonprofits use all the time. Only six. I've, all, I've already given you four. I'm going to give you two more. Collect donors' social media info. What I'm trying to say is it's very great to have 10,000 followers on Facebook or Instagram, right? But what if you don't, if you don't have no info about them? Of course, you got to ask them. You got to ask their, you, you got to get their authorization before collecting the data because there are some um, laws and regulations around donors, uh, private info and users, private info in general, not only from the authorities, but also from the platform where you are collecting such data. So having a donor's social media information can open new worlds for nonprofit because it allows you as a, as a philanthropy to personalize your messages, but you can also use the information for improved targeting and finding social influencers. Now, the influencers are really critical when it comes to expanding your content and your reach, right? So if you use great images and if you use great videos, you want to make sure that you are personalizing the data you are sending to your, to your um, followers. Number six, choose the right platform and remember that every follower is a potential donor. Now, this is the cornerstone of a great nonprofit marketing strategy. Every follower is a potential donor. Remember that. So you want to treat them fairly, politely. You want to engage with them because you never know, right? Honestly, you shouldn't be engaging with people based on how much they're going to give you. But if your goal is to raise funds, chances are it all boils down to dollars, right? So you want to engage with people who might give something so you can accomplish the goals that you have set for yourself, which is why it is important to choose the right platform. The last thing you want is to pay attention to is just to sit on a platform that is lethargic that doesn't give you anything. Who wants that? It's just a waste of time, waste of energy. It, it leads to discouragement. People are just, you know, your personnel will just be uh, will just be discouraged and might even walk out. So you want to choose the platform properly. Now, when it comes to platforms, there are several, right? From Facebook to Instagram to YouTube to Pinterest to Twitter to LinkedIn to TikTok, you name them. So it's up to you to really see what really what really works for you. You have the general platforms, the Facebook of the world, the YouTube of the world, and you have the niche, what I call the, 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 the niche platforms, LinkedIn, for which is more professionally geared, professionally oriented, and TikTok, which is more youth related. So you want to decide on the right platform. And you once you decide on the right platform, you want to engage, engage, and engage. Right now, each platform has its pros and cons when it comes to philanthropy, when it comes to fundraising. So whenever you are on a platform, you want to study the platform and you want to use the tools that are already available on the platform. For example, on Facebook, you have a tool called Facebook Live and a lot of and America's most successful nonprofits have used this in the past and are still using it. So this is a great opportunity for you to use that also and expand your donor base and, do and donor reach. All right, folks, this is it for today. I really appreciate you listening to us so far. I was talking to you about six social media best practices that America's most successful nonprofits use. And here they are. Share stories. Engage with donors and followers. Don't tell. Show. But you want to show with pictures and videos. Remain consistent with posts, collect donors' social media info, and choose the right platform 
and remember that every follower is a potential donor. I will talk to you another time. Have a wonderful time. And until then, remember, <laughs> stay marvelous. <laughs>